Hey, what's up turtles? Craig here with Black Owl Outdoors. Today I want to share a knife with you, which is the Field Crafter from Battle Horse Knives. This was designed by Kevin Estella, and it's a field crafting knife, as the name suggests, and you'll see it get used, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I like this knife and how it can be used, but some of the specs are, it's $130 even, and we actually picked this up at a show, at a gun show. Battle Horse had a booth there. 130 even, comes with the leather sheath, which I'll show in a second. The cutting edge is about three and five eighths inches. You can see a Scandi grind on there. We have natural micarta handle scales. You do have a lanyard hole down there. Overall length, a little over eight inches. So just a real sort of companion and crafting knife, if you will, to be worn on the belt. And it's uh, made of 01 tool steel. So the knife is 5 seconds inches thick, which is pretty thick for a little small knife like this, a little belt knife, crafting knife, but it works well and I'll talk more on that. And you do have some really nice contouring on the handle from this profile. See it sort of gets thinner up here, you know, swells down here, and you got a little baby swell down here. It's ever so slight, ever so slight down here. Yeah, that's all the specs, so let's start using it, you know. I do want to talk about the sheath before I start using it because it is important and it comes with it and it's pretty nice, honestly. For $130 for this package, for a leather leather sheath, probably about eight ounces, if I had to guess, thickness of the leather. You know, ferro rod loop in here that definitely is uh, wide enough to accommodate the large diameter fire steels. A few things you'll see on this sheath though, because they're offering this at a package deal, there are marks from the feet of the sewing machine. It's just really cosmetic. It didn't damage at all. It didn't pierce this, you know, the top layer of the leather. It's on the front and back of the sheath. Just cosmetic. Doesn't really bother me, you know, for $130 for the knife and the sheath, leather, stitched. Not really an issue, but something, something I think worth mentioning. All right, let's start using it now. I'm just gonna baton this piece of wood down and I'm doing it on a rock, okay? So I wanna make mention that I am batoning on a rock. But when I baton, I don't ever go to the bottom of the piece of wood because you usually never have to. Usually never have to. I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm very confident and feel comfortable doing it. See that right there? I can feel pretty much all the tensions off that now. I can take the knife out and then just pull this apart. Easy peasy. Split pretty nice and put one of these halves aside for later. I'm gonna baton one more time. And yes, this is a small knife and there's so much debate about batoning. Baton, baton. French, right? Baton. I'm not gonna go into it, but it's more than, more than adequate to be able to do this small type of batoning with knives this, this size for sure. So because it is 5.30 seconds and it's definitely, you know, a thick knife for this, that it, it actually has a nice wedge uh, sort of action as you're batoning through this. Now I'm going to try to do some feather sticking on this. I might not feel comfortable doing this rock. I'm going to see how the wood reacts. And, uh, you know, just, just go with it, but we'll see. That's probably where I'll stop for safety's sake of the edge. It's doing a pretty nice job. You know, when I mean, we first saw this sitting on the table and really liked the design initially as we saw it. I picked it up, looked at it, and was like, oh, you know, 5.30 seconds. Why is it that thick for this sort of crafting style of a knife? But still wanted to give it a try, so we purchased it. And you can see, as I'm doing it right now, and subsequently when I first started using it, it's like it does a really nice job with fine sort of control work on wood. And that's what this knife is designed for, at least in my mind. 
when I see a design like this is that it's made for manipulating and carving wood with a lot of control. The scanty grind will lend itself to that. The fact that this has sort of the tip of the knife is down the center line of the knife. All of that is just, you know, really conducive for woodworking. So that's all pretty much all the feather stick I'm going to do right now. And I can tell this wood's a little bit harder. Still not sure what it is, but I want to discard this piece of wood right now and start doing some more sort of techniques of carving, if you will, and talk a little bit more about the knife. Now I just want to sort of demonstrate some, uh, I guess, knife techniques that I see myself using and have sort of used in these style of knives. This handle is really comfortable for doing these more sort of small carving style uses of the knife. I'm going to switch to do something now, do a different type of cut, more of a power cut out away from my body. Again, really comfortable. I do want to make mention though, this is a pretty small handle. And what I mean small is sort of width this wide. And while that makes it really nimble and comfortable to maneuver the knife in the hand, for like power cuts, it feels like it just doesn't quite fill my hand as much as it could. This isn't a, a you know complete deal breaker. I don't even want to say deal breaker. It's just an observation. And if you're not gonna be doing lots of power cuts like that, it's really not that much of an issue. It works, it's comfortable, and it doesn't give any immediate hot spots. I'm not saying that, but for me, my personal preference for a sort of crafting knife like this and the knife I designed, it just has a little bit thicker handle, just a little bit more to fill the hand. But like I said, that's personal preference, but something worth mentioning. Use this technique if I'm doing spoons, shape around the bowl. So again, just getting a feel for the knife, how it feels in the hand, and letting you see how it works. And you can see I'm hitting this grain right here. It's sort of catching on itself because I'm digging deep, but that's okay. I'm gonna switch around and do another technique, come from this other angle. I just wanna show you sort of the capabilities, or crafting, if you will, or carving capabilities of the knife. So you can see that, that line I was basically carving into, give some shape. At this point, I'm gonna do like the chest lever now, come from the other direction. You can see profile, I'm working my way towards this little sort of spot right here. I had that wood sort of hinging. Just working my way down until I take that away. At this point, I switch back around. Same techniques I use for carving a spoon, switch around, come back to this side. And I sort of rotate the knife in my hand to sort of get that nice little cut, clean finish. Again, switch back around. And I'll go real slow so you can sort of see. Bam. 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 Some push cuts from assisted with my thumb. And this does have a sharpened 90 degree spine. I'm not sure if I mentioned that 
at all yet but um, for a specific carving knife if you want to do that something like this technique or this style of cut is that this spine definitely grinds on your thumb definitely wears on your thumb by having it sharpen the whole way to the tip where you're normally going to be using your thumb to sort of give that little rock in motion in the, in the cut it's okay you know you could either wear gloves or just get you know thicker thumb skin So I hope this has given you a kind of a good idea of the knife, how it works, sort of how I see its intended purposes. And like I said, it does have a does have a sharpened spine, but this is the sort of angle. You can see sort of the shape I was going after, and I was doing it real slow to make sure it was all in frame. But you can imagine, you know, the shape of a spoon starting up here and coming over here to the shoulder and bringing up the handle. Let's try to use the spine now. I don't really use a spine like this. I know some people want that capability, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but I personally don't find a need to use a spine like that. The blade will do just as nice a job. I can get curls that are really fine that'll take a spark if that's what I'm going after. But, you know, everyone's different, so I want to try to show everything objectively. Yeah, so that's basically all I wanted to do for this video and sort of show this knife to you because I really haven't seen anything about this knife online. Any videos, just not really much about it. And I think it's a nice little crafting knife. Like I said, my apprehensions were it's 532 seconds, which is a pretty, you know, big thickness or it's a great thickness, I guess, for this size and style of knife. But it works fine. It works well. And if you're sort of on the apprehension of, you know, you still want some thickness to your blades regardless of what they're going to be used for. I get it. For me, it doesn't need to be this thick, but like I said, it works just as well. It works fine. Really no issues with that. So if you have any questions about, you know, this knife or anything I touched on, any sort of techniques I was using to carve, and I was trying to be very safe. Everything was on the outside of my right leg. Everything was out over here, which is important. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you found this video uh, helpful. And if you let me know if you like this knife, what do you think about it? Thumbs up if you, uh, if you if you enjoyed the video. If you want to support the channel, YouTube Tip Jar is now up and running for us. This is Craig signing out with Black Owl Outdoors. Later, turtles. <laughs>